step 2. Each substituted group is indicated by a characteristic prefix. The presence of two methyls is evidenced by the use of prefix di. Step 3. Finally, the number of the carbon atom to which it is attached indicates the position of attachment of each substituent. Commas are used to separate the number for the same substituent and a dash separates the numbers from the name. Then, list the substituents alphabetically without considering the prefix. That makes the correct name for this alkene. 5 tertiary butyl, 4 ethyl, 2 8 dimethyl dekene. The alkanes, sometimes called the paraffin series, are a homologous series of saturated aliphatic hydrocarbons. They have little affinity for other reagents because their carbon carbon and carbon hydrogen bonds are unreactive. Click on each component to know more. Another type of aliphatic hydrocarbon is the alkyne series, where the compound contains a triple bond between two carbon atoms in the molecule. Click on the structural formula to view the 3D molecular structure. Alkynes are unsaturated hydrocarbon that will react with hydrogen to produce alkanes. Click on the play button to start the animation. Alkynes are chemically very active and are not found free in nature. The simplest alkyne is ethyne, better known as acetylene. Acetylene is a colorless gas prepared by the reaction between calcium carbide and water. Click on the play button to start the animation. Reactions of alkynes are similar to the reaction of alkenes. Alkynes, too, undergo addition reactions with substances such as halogen, hydrogen halides, acids, oxidizing agents, and also water, adding atoms at the triple bonds. Click on the play button to start the animation. Alkynes will also react with hydrogen to produce alkanes. Click on the play button to start the animation. To name the structure of an alkyne, as not to be identical to the name of any other compounds, we can use the IUPAC nomenclature rules. Follow the simple steps to name an alkyne. Step 1. Begin by finding the longest continuous chain of triple bond carbon atoms. That will provide the stem name for the compound. In this case, the longest chain contains 10 carbon atoms, so the stem name is Decline. 
Step 2. Each substituted group is indicated by a characteristic prefix. The presence of two methyls is evidenced by the use of the prefix di. Step 3. Finally, the number of the carbon atom to which it is attached indicates the position of attachment of each substituent. Commas are used to separate the number for the same substituent and a dash separates the numbers from the name. Then, list the substituents alphabetically. That makes the correct name for this alkyne. 4 ethyl, 5 isopropyl, 2 8 dimethyl dikyne. Naphthenes, or saturated cyclic hydrocarbons, consists of carbon rings. They are chemically stable and have similar properties to paraffins. Click on the structural formula to view the 3D molecular structure. The general formula for cycloalkanes is CnH2n, where n equals 3 or more. Click on the structural formula to view the 3D molecular structure. In this unit, we have dealt with hydrocarbons. We now know that 1. There are two types of hydrocarbons, aliphatic and aromatic. 2. Alkanes, alkenes and alkynes are known as aliphatic hydrocarbons, while aromatic hydrocarbons consist of cyclic molecules or rings of carbon atoms that are linked by sigma bonds and delocalized pi bonding. Examples of aromatic hydrocarbons include benzene, naphthalene, and anthracene. 3. Cycloalkanes are a subfamily of alkane whose carbon atoms are joined in a ring. 4. Alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons which contain carbon carbon single bonds. Alkenes contain a carbon carbon double bond, while alkynes contain a carbon carbon triple bond. Both alkenes and alkynes are unsaturated hydrocarbons. 5. Aromatic hydrocarbons contain carbon atoms with delocalized electrons, often benzene rings. Usually benzene is a parent compound and attached groups are named as prefixes. Everything we see around us is made from fewer than 100 different types of atoms. Atoms can react with one another to form new compounds. The resulting compound is unique, both chemically and physically, from its component atoms. Let's look at an example. Sodium is a silver-colored metal that reacts so viciously with water. Chlorine is a greenish-colored gas that is poisonous. It was used as a weapon in World War I. When both sodium and chlorine react chemically, a compound, sodium chloride, a common table salt, is formed. Upon contact, sodium reacts viciously with chlorine. Let's take a more detailed look at this reaction. When the sodium atoms are in contact with the chlorine atoms, an ionic reaction occurs. Each sodium atom loses one electron to each chlorine atom. This transfer of electron releases energy. The resulting compound, sodium chloride, 
is held together by the positively charged sodium ions and the negatively charged chlorine ions. Not many atoms, except those of the noble gases, exist in isolation under normal conditions. They all interact in one way or another to form more stable and lower energy compounds. Atoms consist of a tiny, positively charged nucleus with different numbers of electrons in shells of increasing energy levels around it. What you see here is the construction of a sodium atom. 11 positively charged protons and 12 neutrons form the nucleus. Two electrons fill the first shell. Eight electrons fill up the second shell and a single electron in the outer shell. The outer shell is called the valence shell. The 11 negatively charged electrons balance the 11 positive protons in the nucleus. The illustration shows that in the sodium atom, there is a single valence electron in the outermost shell. Valence electrons, which reside in the outermost shell, are going to be involved in chemical interactions and bonding. The first successful theory of chemical bonding was formulated by G. N. Lewis in 1916. Lewis electron dot formula is a convenient representation of valence electrons. It allows us to keep track of valence electrons during bond formation. It consists of the chemical symbol for the element plus a dot to represent each valence electron. Let's look at an example. Electron configuration for sulfur is neon 3s2 3p4. Thus, there are six valence electrons. Its Lewis symbol would therefore be Note that the dots representing electrons are placed on four sides of the atomic symbol. Each side can accommodate up to two electrons. Atoms often gain, lose or share electrons to achieve the same number of electrons as the noble gas closest to them in the periodic table. Because all noble gases except for helium have filled S and P valence orbitals, many atoms undergoing reactions also end up with 8 valence electrons. This attainment of 8 electrons is known as the octet rule. Let's look at some examples of how the Lewis dot structures are obtained. First category will be molecules in which the central atoms obey the octet rule. In this example, the central atom is phosphorus surrounded by three chlorine atoms. Step 1. Calculate the total valence electrons from all atoms. We will have 5 from phosphorus in group 15 with 5 valence electrons plus 21 from 3 chlorine atoms from group 17 with 7 valence electrons, giving a total of 26 electrons.